Hey, good morning. Today is Sunday, February 19th. What day is it on day 47 for traditional and digital? Oh boy. It's still going, the tiger. Still working on it. I uh, got a lot to do still. And um, yeah, gonna have fun today. Gonna see if we can get a lot accomplished on the tiger body, definitely. And uh, what's interesting as I come into it this morning, hey, good morning, Thinker. I'm liking the head. I think the shock of light can be a less yellow. Time to move onto the body and, and the rock. Yeah, definitely, I agree. So yeah, less yellow within the uh, that shock of light. We'll do that some other time. I think it's looking good. Um, <clears throat> I think we do need uh, more light on the body in some way because I, I kind of darkened it up a lot. Uh, and if we go to, oh, I didn't open it yet. Saved it for our last one. If we go to the, the value composition that we have, um, the, the body is a lot lighter. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna kind of fake the light a little bit on this anyways, and I think it'll be fine. I don't think it's going to be a problem if the light is not exactly perfect like real life. Uh, yeah, that's part of what we can do as artists, right? And where am I working up the body at? Right here. Yeah, definitely. So what I can do... I'm trying to think of the best, the easiest way to do that within these layers. I wonder if, if I could do the, just a quick test on this, where it's gonna show up. Isn't that crazy? The ability to just destroy your whole <laughs> painting and then bring it back, no problem. Uh, man. Okay. What if we just bumped up the light some? This is kind of in the background. It's under some layers that I've already put on. It's really hitting everything now. I need to be more exact on this. I can't just do it willy nilly. Uh, I need to, I need to put some effort into it. That's one thing that I found that I tend to do with uh, digital is is I tend to think, oh, it's digital, I can go a lot faster. And I don't I don't need to work on the details and things. And then and I figure out later on like, oh, no, that's I still need to do that. Still need to work it. <clears throat> it has a lot of advantages, but it doesn't take away all the work. Yeah. Okay, let's, I think one of the first things I wanna do, and I keep having to go back to my favorite brushes and pick out this pencil. Actually, I really don't have to do that because if I'm, if I'm here, I could still use this menu and get that brush. I need to always remember that. And what I wanna do is I wanna grab one of these dark black colors in this little tiny brush and I want to get better placement for these stripes. The stripes are really important. They, they, they describe the, the whole form of this tiger. And you know what? To make this easier on me and quicker, um, I'm going to open up the reference and we're just going to paste it over and trace it. I don't care what you think. I'm tracing it been working on this darn tiger for so long it's it's about time that I use the digital means and it's one of those things where if I was painting this exact tiger and I traced it and you know in every mode uh, yeah I would I would kind of feel cheap feel like I'm cheating myself in some ways but wait didn't I already do this Hold on. Oh, there's some light color on that tiger. Yeah. 
Look, that overlay's already there. Jeez. I've got so many layers, and this has taken so long <laughs> that I've completely forgotten that I've already done this. Okay, so it's here. All I need to do is make sure it's in the right place still. It, it, it would be very easy to, you know, turn down to the, the, the opacity like this and then look at it and go, wow, I could just photo bash the crap out of that. And it would look really great. Kind of like the gray, how the gray's looking for some reason. I don't know why. Huh. Anyway, no, not going to photo bash it though. Going to figure it out. Not going to take the super easy route, <clears throat> unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Okay, that's the beard. We're under the beard. We're going to be on this layer. All right. All figured out. Yeah. We're just going to draw it directly on this layer. Hopefully we can see it. And I cannot. Okay, we'll just have to do an overlay then. Insert a nice bright red. This is a really good stripe here. <clears throat> but it's going, and I mean, if I turn the that off, it, you know, it's it mostly it's it's all obscured. And that's really interesting. Like our beard is so large that it's obscuring the, the front body of that tiger. But if you look at the Sumatran tigers, I mean, I could do that overlay and we've, we've given this tiger a trim. It's accurate. The two most important parts of this is this line here and this line here. It's the two overlapping lines that gives form in space. Those are the two most important lines. Without those, it would look really flat. I like this kind of divot in the, in the fur. It, it reminds me of what we were talking about in composition where you have, you know, maybe two items and they're touching each other. You know, it's, there's a tangent there. You don't know which one is in front of the other, which one's behind. But if you do something like this, you know, now you have distance, right? So that's what these are doing, these, these two lines. It's giving the difference between the front of the body and this line here. It's giving the difference between the front of the body and the rest. Not a lot of stripes up front here. I do want to put kind of an indication where the, the separation between the orange and white is. And I've looked at Sumatran tiger bodies because we're doing a Sumatran tiger. And um, as far as white on the chest, it's pretty similar from what I've observed. Let's do this as well. Uh, I'm going to close this one. We don't need it. Open. Oh, this is interesting. Look at this tiger's tail is like straight up in the air. I'm looking for a tiger tail. This is going to be a tiger. It's interesting when they're at rest, how the, the tail just kind of droops straight down, but then it goes straight up in some instances. And I just heard my cats knock over something in the kitchen. I hope it sounded like a cup. Hopefully it wasn't full of water. <laughs> Gonna have to clean that up afterwards.
just looking at how different tails. Now this is all Sumatran tiger. And actually, if I look at the big beard on this one, well, this, these are both Sumatran tigers. This one has a lot of white on the front. This one does not. This one's very orange. Looks like a Bengal tiger, a crazy orange. I'm gonna open up this one. Wow, you're a tiny image. That's fine. That's really interesting. Something that we can see in our tiger photo is this, um, you know, with these stripes here, I'm gonna outline a bunch of these stripes because they get really close together here. A lot of blending of stripes. But, but they indicate this kind of divot, this uh, concave shape with the side of the tiger. That's a, a healthy tiger that is not eating too much and not pregnant. Most of this down here we won't even bother with. It's gonna be, it's not a big part of the composition and I'm not gonna be messed with it. I will open this one though and give it a, another look. Wow, this must be a big image. Or no, the one in the background was saving. Yeah, not as white. Maybe we pull that in, but you can see there's not a lot of stripes. Definitely a male tiger. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out. Yeah, not a lot of stripes. Sumatran tiger. We, this is a young tiger. We got the beard. That's actually really kind of cool with a Sumatran tiger is how we get this longer beard <laughs> as they grow older. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. As a person with a beard myself. Yeah, let's do it. Let's Let's do this. It, it would be easy to draw this shape, right? This is not a hard shape to do, but I want to grab the stripes on that shape as well. And we're going to put it right here. Little tiny image. It's so small. Look at that. It's ridiculous. It's going to be very pixelated, but that's fine. We're not gonna use it, we're just gonna use it as an idea, really. Uh, layer, transform horizontally, mirror horizontally. And I got part of the bottom of the tiger, the backside. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like the flow. It's kind of swoops down. Yeah, that's nice. All right. Let's go ahead and change the opacity on that down to what the tiger is, 31. The important part of cylinders that um, I can stop and talk about, no, well, not stop and talk about, but I can illustrate here is the edge of uh, the contour. 
and it's confusing in a lot of these stripes because it's not doing what I'm wanting to illustrate or maybe it is and my red line is obscuring it because it's tiny if you have a cylinder you're gonna have two ellipses okay here's your cylinder and then when you do a cross contour what's important when you do a cross contour on these is the very last kind of um, form on that it's it kind of has a uh, words it, it it has a gradual bend to it like like the um, ellipse that's on the top and the bottom but then on the edge it sharpens out it like uh, so if we looked at the edge closer it would do this it would hit that kind of quick turn right at the end and uh, the good thing to remember is uh, ellipses will never go to a point on the end they will never be points they're always going to be that sharp curve no matter the the degrees of them so when I'm looking at the tiger tail I'm keeping in mind that really sharp turn at the end Although some of these stripes, these contoured stripes, are not doing that. It's interesting. Nature will always throw you kind of a curve, I guess, curveball. That's going to be obscured <clears throat> by the palm that we have in there. All right, that's the stripes. And you can see a little bit of the tail poking out back there and this other leg. I'm gonna obscure. I'm not gonna worry about e either of those. I don't think it's unnecessary. Oh, you know what I will do is make sure that I get these uh, toenail openings, these claw openings. That's where the claws come out. Get the knuckles and everything correct. I can even do some cross contours to make sure that I get this shape good or accurate. When doing cross contours, the other thing I would say about this is remembering the overall form as, as well as the smaller forms. Um, for example, the cross contour of the entirety of this paw at the bottom is going to be, you know, something like this. Right, but then the individual shapes are going to have all these lumps within them turn at the end, but then also follow that overall shape. See, it goes like that. So keep you know remembering that you know you got an overall shape plus individual shapes. And I like this, I, I, I like this here because what it's reminding me of is the human wrist. So you have a wrist, hopefully, I think if you're listening to this, uh, maybe you don't, uh, and that's okay too. But if you do have a wrist, it, the end of it right before it turns into your hand is closer to like a two by four, probably not that big. Maybe you're a big person, that would be kind of cool, wow. Um, but what I mean by that is it's kind of squares off. So we have a, a definite corner here. And it's the same thing's happening on the tiger. So kind of having that idea. It's not perfectly square. I mean, it's making, when I do it that way, it makes it look like it's super square. But, um, okay, which which way would the, the curve go? Where's, where's the uh, eye line at? right there yeah so it's it's definitely going to be a down curve so it'd be something like this probably maybe
but more of a it would be flatter on both sides I would say yeah that would be closer to it I think That may, <clears throat> may seem a little bit uh, ridiculous to some that look at this and go, well, you know, these cross contours are unnecessary, ridiculous, or whatever. Having this understanding um, is probably one of the most important things that you can do in your career of the artist. Having the getting or gaining. And when I say having, it's like, it's like you automatically have it. Like, oh, I have understanding of form. Well, no, you really don't. No one really does because we're always uh, going to be um, challenged with new and different forms. But the ability to quickly look at, you know, a flat image and get a better understanding of the form, that's what's really important. And, I, you know, I always do that through cross contours. Um, definitely. That really helps me. Yeah. Okay. Enough of that. Now we got that all lined out. I can remove all of our imagery. I can take this layer and drop the opacity like way down. And the first thing I see that we need to do is I need to lighten up the body so that I can put the stripes in there and actually see them. And they're way off, really, from what I was doing yesterday. Let's see if I turn this whole layer off, what happens. Actually, what, what is this that I just turned on? I have no idea where that's at. We can just, oh. Oh, yeah. I did not like that. No, I'm gonna get rid of that. I do not like that. Lightening up that thing, that's okay. And we had a, a layer for darkening up the palm fronds in the background. I think I'm going to keep them light. I, I'm going to remove that. Yeah, I think that's fine. What's on this paint layer? I don't think anything's on this layer. No. Sorry, doing a, some cleanup here. Some reference that I have, I pulled in from last time. Okay, all right. I'm gonna work on this light, lightening layer. And I may keep this, but I'm gonna bring the opacity way down just to help out with like another layer of texture. And then I'm gonna merge down. And I'll just have to redraw some of the beard. I'm not gonna, not gonna worry about that. Oh, I need to put my phone into do not disturb. Actually, no, this is important. Sorry about that. Wife is flying home. Got to pick her up today. Okay, she's more important than anybody watching this. <laughs> Unless you're my family. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Oh, is it me or should the back right leg be a little thicker? Let's see. 
maybe down here but as you can see i traced it it's like right there probably what you're seeing is there's the bit of the tail that's there this little little bit of the tail that's showing um and then we have the extra leg there so that's kind of throwing things off and, and because of the awesome markings of tigers where they blend in it's like their legs blend into each other as well <laughs> pretty funny okay um i'm gonna be adjusting this light lightning layer lighten layer removing it from the beard and then grabbing this brush turning it into an eraser and we're gonna ah eraser please thank you get rid of the edges of this so it doesn't look like he's got the glow although that'd be cool do you guys remember a really bad and yes it was really bad um like kung fu movie yeah, so it is you, Finker, yeah. Really old kung fu movie, like Got the Glow or something like that. Something about the glow. <laughs> Loved that movie when I was a kid. Hopefully there's a few of you nodding. Or maybe there's a few of you going, wow, I looked that up and it's so old. Like you. Yeah, I'm not that old. Thinker's got me on that one. All right, let's bring some more light into this. And we're gonna do it specifically. I'm going to grab a nice light color from the tiger. Oh, that is not light at all. How about this one? Hmm. Okay, yeah, it's because I'm on a light and I'm on an overlay layer, so I'm gonna get this kind of overlay look. Oh, geez, give me a second. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. I just need to make this really bright. Maybe... Let's gray it out some. Yeah. Wow, it's already five o'clock. Seems like a half an hour goes by in like two minutes on this stream. Now it needs to be closer to orange, I think. If we're here and we have light on this tiger, and I really wish they would just light a tiger with one light, but yeah, they probably can't because it, <clears throat> then they'd have to bring the tiger into a studio and that could cause other issues. Let's pick this color. One of these up here. As far as an overlay layer is concerned, let's see what that does. Yeah, that, that actually works. I like that. to go up into the beard on this or else it's going to look weird and I think same on this side as well it's going to be we'll have to redo some of that beard there but it'll look like it goes behind the beard the the body and you can see you know some of the light through the beard I think that's important Although, when you're using any, these lightning layers and you don't have anything behind it, it doesn't really work that well. 
So what I need to do is really pick a color for it to go on to. So I'm just painting directly on the tiger right now. That's really it. Oh, I picked a green color accidentally. I was like, why is that getting green? <laughs> okay, that shouldn't, uh, that's too dark. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. We're so, I'm so subdued in everything that it's almost too dark. The one thing that you have to think about, or at least I'm thinking about right now, as far as um, an oil painting is concerned, is all of the extra issues that you can, you know, kind of consign yourself to if you use, if you go for a very dark painting. Um, which is fine. I mean, it's like... If you're if you need to do a dark painting because the um, the subject matter calls for it, uh, then go for it. But the biggest issues with uh, painting really dark is just the massive amount of glare that you have to deal with on a painting, especially when you're showing it, and then dust. Like I've done just all black canvases or mostly all black canvases, and it just uh, yeah, you see dust and everything on it like crazy. Uh, are you painting really lightly and building up the color slowly? Well, yeah. Um, I, I'm on the layer right now with the tiger just to get like some kind of background going for this lightning layer to sit up top, on top of. And you can see that everything that I'm putting down in this background layer is much different than the color I have because that lightning, lightning layer that I put over it. But I'm giving a substrate for it, for that overlay or overlay to kind of rest, really. Just and just kind of throwing it in, honestly. Um, I figure that actually, let's look at our value study. How okay that that goes down to about there, and that's good. I figure that this would be you know kind of a textural thing that happens. You know, to grab some more texture. Wh where I need the texture is on the edges uh, of the, the body as well. Because the edges are a bit uh, sharp. We, we need to soften out those edges because it's fur. It's not, we're not a cartoon. I've, I seem like I've... I'm painting cartoons in bad lights, but there's nothing wrong with cartoons. I just say, I, you know, I don't want mine to look like a cartoon. Um, and I think that's enough because the, the, the purpose of that was to get to a lighter color so I can actually see the black stripes that I'm about to put in. We're gonna put them in like within a, a black teal kind of color. And you know, this one here, we're not gonna see any of that. Wow, where's that layer? There it is. You know what, I'm gonna go back to my hairbrush. On the wrong layer again. Gonna have to fix the beard here, at least somewhat. 
Getting that overlap is so important, especially in oil paint. Uh, go over your edges. Always, always, always kind of go beyond your edges and don't be afraid to repaint what you've already done. I would say 95% of the time, anything you repaint will be better than it was before. Even if you, you feel like you weren't really focusing on, on it when you were painting, you've learned something there. Muscle memory, your brain has gained something. These are all on a separate layer, these stripes that I'm doing right now. And yeah, that's what I need. Um, I'm doing them as black as I can right now, just real black. What I will do is bring my reference back over because I need to get an understanding of uh, the direction of the hairs, you know, where they're going to. So I'm doing this in a full black color so that, and on a separate layer, so that I can um, kind of light it up all at once if I needed to. And I probably will. Or each individual stripe I can affect differently in some way. Working with a really small brush here because there's some distance Oh, which reminds me, there's one thing you can do also. Let's let's remove uh, this layer here so we can see your background. Let's let's say if, if I go into the background tiger and I one of the, this is the David Ravoy brush set. These brushes right here, these ones in white. I can't remember what this one is for, but the ones in white are smudge brushes, and uh, this one here that looks like it's got kind of a palette knife. It's the blender rake smudge um, this is what he uses to affect edges in a lot of ways so we could you know let's look at where the so the hair is kind of going you know straight out and then it kind of shifts to going down and straight out there so if i think about that i can use this smudge to just really affect those edges, really change them up. But you don't want to do it too much because there's some small bumps and things in here that we want to keep. So maybe a bit smaller brush, so maybe I can get some more kind of hair thing going. Maybe not, let's keep it big. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that softened it up a lot. Not as much as I want. I want it a bit softer. Actually, you know, what I would probably, what I'll probably do here is I'll also turn this into a eraser. Let's see if that works if I do an erasing. Can't even tell. Oh no. Okay, don't turn your smudge brushes into an eraser. What I need is this brush here with this kind of texture or this splatter texture, maybe really small, like that, and then turn that into an eraser. Oh no, it's got some other properties to it that we don't want. I think the value of the white of the chest and legs needs to be brought up in value to be similar to the color you're putting on. Yeah, I agree. Um, probably gonna, definitely gonna do that at some point. Let's do it, let's do it with this, our good old hairbrush. Where is that light coming from? Oh, that's, that's our light and layer. Okay. I think at some point I'll have to merge the light and layer down. I wonder what that's gonna do. Control E. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just keep it merged. We can go back in there and affect whatever we want. Okay, let's go back to our black color with our stripes. 
And now I've forgotten where it's at. There it is. Yeah, I, I agree with you with the tre the chest, definitely. I'm guessing on this, but I'm pretty sure that this is the direction for the hair that will happen for this stripe. You know, out, 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 and then kind of slowly down. It's kind of like it's, you know, if, if you took, um, it's like, it's like cross contour on the z-axis. So if you took hairs that went really far out, it would go out this way, out that way, out that way. Right? And we'd go around the whole body this way. Like we just gave him a really big bone collar or something. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I mean, you, you think about um, even the hairs are following the contour. So if I went in here and I just put, you know, randomly just put some hairs in there with, without thinking about the form, you're going to lose a lot of that interest, a lot of that, you know, the little subtleties that make the object that you're painting what it is. And I think if you go on ArtStation and there's a category called textures, I think, textures and something else. And it's just all these amazing artists that are building um, like three-dimensional objects with all these different textures. And for people that do renderings uh, for textures, they can take that and just say, oh, okay, I want brick, I want rock, I want fur. And I bet you those guys, those people, know this idea of texture following form. Just as a test on this, while I'm thinking about it, let's say we pull out this white of the tiger. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna. Well, obviously, no, not not using that word. That's not gonna work. It's too too light. Okay, so let's just let's keep the same uh, hue, which is basically just white as it's in the center there. We could probably uh, bring some teal or green to it because there's going to be some reflective light from the jungle. This guy's not, or this tiger's not getting all that reflection. And then we can just gray it down. Or at least darken it up. We're not graying it down. It's already really gray. We just darken it up. And we go, is that too bright? Yes, that's way too bright. Okay, a little bit less. Mm, getting close. It's 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 close to a point where you're like, I'm not sure, and that's how you know you're getting close. Warm it up just a bit in a couple places. I think I think this might be where we need to be with this. And we have range because we saw a couple Sumatran tigers that had more, you know, it was more orangey up in here. So we can always bring some orange into that. So right around that value would probably work well. And it's one of those things where I put it on a separate layer so that I can mess with it and, you know, in its own aspect. Separate it out so that you can, oof adjust it easily later. Tracing on and off. Now I'm going to put, wow, there's a confusion of lines here. It's like which one is the um, stripe and which is not. OK, 
Okay. That is very confusing. Wow, these stripes are just lines. I mean, at this point, it's just... I'm doing a shaky line all the way down. And I'll definitely have to lighten up this area. Or maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see. I'm just painting right over the reference right now. I wonder if you can hear my stylus. A little scratch, 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 scratch. Hopefully it's not scratching. It has a sound to it, which is kind of nice. Okay, I don't need the reference for that. It's really easy to get into using these crutches. You know, these little things that make art easier but I'm, I'm always of the mind to remove crutches remove crutches use them but you know kind of like training wheels eventually you want to take them off so you can go faster so you can feel that freedom of ability I mean, we don't want to be on training wheels the whole time, right? We want to be able to do this without anything else helping us. You know, we're here to build the skill. Going really fast with these, though. Yeah, I, I think I've only been doing digital art for about hmm. I think it's actually coming up on a year, maybe. Maybe in May. I'm not sure. Not a year yet. Yeah, this summer will be a year, I think. But anyway, <clears throat> my point is uh, that, or the point I want to try and make here is I, I don't really have, you know, this amazing skill in it yet. I, I you know, and I'm not going to tell you that I do, because I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm really leaning heavily on my um, traditional skills, because those do transfer well. Uh... So I still have to build up the skill here, and I think when I do build up the skill, uh, the more comfort I have, uh, the faster I'll be able to go with these things. But that's... I don't know if that's obvious. No, it's not obvious, because that word is meaningless most of the time. I hate using that word because, to me, it may be obvious, but to hundreds of thousands of people that are just starting out, they're like, what are you talking about? It's not obvious at all. But if you think about it, it took me, well, my whole life to get where I'm at on my painting, my traditional art journey right now. And to think that 
I could pick up digital mediums and, you know, uh, a tiny fraction of that time, you know, I, I'm kind of disrespecting the complexity of the medium if I'm thinking that way. All right, those are in, let's get the tail. Yeah, no, R, that's what I wanted. Not even gonna use the reference on this, that's okay. Which ones are the stripes and which are not? Oh no. <laughs> All right, maybe I will turn on the reference real quick. Wherever it is, where is the reference? There it is. Okay, as soon as I have one, I have the others. Oh, the one thing I, I don't have on this is the non-stripe part of it. So, see, I feel like I'm going faster now on this because uh, I know the ability that we have in digital means to be able to easily adjust this. This is not gonna be a prominent part of, or the tail is not gonna be a prominent part of this piece. So I'm not really worried about uh, direction of hairs or anything like that. What I will do is turn that on. Wow, it's just white. Is that a Sumatran tiger that we got that tail from? Well, it's interesting how it goes. You know, it's a very orange tiger, but the, the tail bottom is more white than anything. That's gonna be kind of cool. Let's put it on this one, this layer. Part of the layer with the tiger. We'll, we'll grab that green, but then we're gonna darken up it a lot. And this is underneath our... Wow, really, Did, is that... Yeah, I just matched the background. <laughs> like, perfectly. How random is that? All right, so let's take that color and let's lighten it up a bit. Ooh, too much. Oh, it's so subtle. Or maybe that wasn't too much. No, that's fine. Not worried about turning the form within value ranges on this right now. Let's just get a base underneath these stripes. And honestly, I, I could outline this and then do a quick fill and get, you know, this filled in pretty quickly. But I, more and more I opt for the texture. You know, as soon as I turn off these red lines, it's gonna look terrible because, hey, look at that, look at that. <laughs> look like a child did it. I missed your message there, Thinker, sorry. Would comparing the value of the white to the value of the color help? I, and, and I'm going to assume that you were talking about with the chest area, and maybe you're talking about, you know, the comparative difference in the reference. That would be kind of cool. Let's do that. It's actually a cool idea. Uh, I'm gonna make a new layer for this. So the, the super white of our reference right here, let's make that bigger. I mean, we're looking way up into the whites there. And then let's, the orange that's in the light is right there. I bet you if I did a control U on this. No, it is, it is a different value, you know, subtly different value. So that's where we're at with those two. And then if 
I do a pick on this one. I mean, they're really close in value, you, as you can see. There's not, a, I'm, I'm looking at this little stripe up here. It doesn't change very much. The hue changes, but the value, I mean, heck, the control U would show me that right away, you know. Actually, no, that looks pretty close, but, or that looks pretty far off, but when you actually look at the change, You know, the one thing I'm thinking about is that doesn't make sense. Let's do this. Sidetrack. Okay, this is going to be a sidetrack. I'm going to create a filter mask on these two little... I'm going to zoom in on it. Okay, these two little value areas, okay? And let's say I create... Let's go ahead and create a new layer. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to repeat those same colors right next to each other up here. Okay, and then turn back on these two. Now watch this. Here's my gray, okay? You see how far that dropped down? Okay, and then my white. So the and we're, we're looking at this slider over here. Hopefully you're seeing this slider, the value slider um, within the advanced color selector. I mean, I could do, I could go into a full color picker only. Here you go. All right. There's the dark, there's the light. So the change is from here to there. So we have this big jump. Now, if I do the same pick, from here to here. You see how small that jump is? That's really confusing. When, hmm. When in digital, and maybe this is this is the true, you know, true for traditional as well. But at least when you re when you remove all the color, um, it's going to show that maybe the true change between values. You know, is this correct? Come on. Is this correct or is this correct? As far as value when we're picking it, is that the right value all the way up here? Or is this the right value? And because they're so different in value, can we ever trust value within the color picker? I'm gonna do another test. This this could be huge. Um, I'm actually gonna take a screenshot of that little part and I'm gonna open up Photoshop. I think I've opened up Photoshop maybe once on this live stream. But I wanna see how Photoshop handles these values. Right? So let's say new file. Uh, yeah, from clipboard. Let's go for it. <laughs> it didn't really paste from clipboard, but it got the size from clipboard, but it didn't do as cool as. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> it didn't do as cool as um, Crito, where it'll, it'll just pull it from the clipboard exactly. Uh, Thinker says, ultimately, you'll be dealing with the color. Try comparing those two values from your tiger. Right. I understand that. In this situation, I'll ultimately be dealing with color, and you're correct. But this is more of an understanding on um, 
how digital functions, okay? Or at least how these two programs function. If you can see this color is way off. I don't know if you can tell that, but I can definitely tell that. Like that's not the color that was, or was it? Eh, it's close enough. Okay. There's some differences in, you know, whatever was, was chosen. Okay. Where's my... Oh, jeez. Wow, look at that. I, I'm not even touching my... pin display. Boy. <laughs> what is up with Photoshop? It's like, you can't have Photoshop and Krita open at the same time. We're gonna run really slow. Uh, the one thing I don't know how to do is look at just value. Eh, we'll wing it. Alt, not control. So Photoshop coloration right here. There. There. Big jump. Small jump. Because we're, we're looking at from top to down. Top, top to bottom. Up, up to down. Yeah. And it's basically the same. That's really interesting. I mean, is that telling us anything about traditional? Like, would the same happen in traditional? Probably. Yeah. But I think you're right, uh, Thinker. Ultimately, we're going to be dealing with color, not value. Um, so why is it important? How, how could, uh, the control you just like removing all color from from something be helpful to us i think it's good for an overall comparison so if we go to the value study you know a comparison of foreground to background or um you know the overall kind of value of things you know comparison on a whole comparison in this level right removing all color in that way uh, is helpful the difference of value may be due to the fact that you're dealing with light in digital versus reflection from traditional paint yeah reflected light versus backlight you know it's there's going to be those differences um maybe in the future they'll get so good at it that you know won't be able to tell the difference but i don't see how that would happen Actually, no. Yeah, I guess I've been dealing with this one the whole time. I don't like the size of that color picker. Anyway, I won't worry about it right now. Okay, uh, so let's get back to that, that better comparison. And we'll do it with a full picker. So within color, there's just a, a tiny change between those two. Of course, this, this is a completely different lighting scenario as well. It'd probably be more accurate if, you know, I went in here and I compared, you know, this grayish to maybe the light side. Well, let's let's step back. What am I trying to achieve here? Are we trying to achieve, you know, the correct value here as it as is compared to, you know, the si the the color that's in the light, right? And and how does that help us if we do? I mean, it would well, I've uh, disrupted and annoyed you enough for today. I have to get going. See you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm, I'm dealing with your question. <laughs> you sidetracked the crap out of me. No? no, it's okay. I'll deal with it. You have your day. I need to get going soon anyways. 
But I, I do want to figure out this kind of chest value color before I go. So thanks for showing up, Thinker. And I'm going to work for a little bit longer. You check out the last like, maybe five, ten minutes of the stream. And when I say five or ten minutes, I mean 15 to 20. <laughs> thanks for showing up. R appreciate you. Okay. So this is, this is the color I picked. Okay. So what we can do is I could say, okay, well, this is in shadow like that. So we're right around like center value range. And this one is much darker. And then the light side of the orange of the tiger is way up here. And this light side is way down there. Maybe the better comparison is the change between the two. So we got center on this one to almost to the bottom. That would be the, the similar value change to almost to the top to center here. So that kind of space. So it's kind of like I've taken the value range and I've turned them both down. Well, we could probably do that within the layer themselves, you know, the, the overlay that we have. This, so if I take this um, image and then maybe control L for levels, let's see how that goes. Take the levels down, the mid-range levels. Maybe chop off the whites. Did that really do anything? Not much. Uh, I can control Z that. Mid range. Mid range. Hmm. Yeah, that's telling. B basically, what I, I kind of learned there is this idea that these value ranges. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm on the right layer. Which, where is the right layer? Here it is. These value ranges between the kind of whitish gray layer and this outside layer are not very different. Let's go to a full picker again. Okay, that's really annoying. I know I hit the space bar. I think critted takes a bit to catch up. So if that were true, okay, like if I stayed within the same similar value range, maybe just a little bit darker, then my uh, The light color should be, or this uh, whiter color should be right around in here. Let's gray it out. And using that comparative, that's along the lines of where it should be. But the problem I have with that, you know, it may work out here. <clears throat> the problem I have with that is it's not going to match with this this um, high contrast lighting that we have in the head. And it's going more along the lines of matching the image. And that's fine if you want to, I mean, we could we could take the image, you know, and just go plop and put it right on here. But I, I don't. That, that's kind of like, uh, I don't want to denigrate that because that's really difficult to do. It's really difficult to learn, to, to be able to take this image and draw it exactly like it is. Same value, same color and everything. But I'm at a point in my career where I've done that so often where it's just been, you know, a carryover of the image 
that now I want this kind of interim step in the center where there's a translation, you know, right here is me. So I take the image, I translate it into me, whatever that is, and then that's what I export from my brain <laughs> to keep it because I'm a robot. <laughs> so in, in that instance, I think we, yes, we can use some of this color, especially where the white is going to um, come in in some places, like right, maybe right around here, maybe up here. I'm going to keep it pretty orange in a lot of these places. So this is where I want the light to kind of come in and, and hit uh, the tiger. So maybe down here. Got to get the, the hair going the right way, which is kind of down. Yeah, in that aspect. And that's not too bad. I, I, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I mean, as far as this value and color and everything. But right as we reach in here and get inside of the other areas that are the internal kind of idea of the tiger, these kind of darker value ranges, shadow cast areas, I'm going to darken this up. Just dealing with gray right now. Just gray. And this is just a little darker, so I'm bringing it in slowly. Just really kind of quickly throwing in a lot of texture, honestly. I mean, all I'm doing with my brush is this, you know, I'm lifting up every now and then to get more of, you know, kind of single textures. But uh, this is this is what I would call kind of like a block in layer on honestly. Introduce a lot of texture, similar value, getting close, you know, you're sneaking up on it. It's not perfect. There's going to be some adjustments, adding interest, all that kind of stuff. And this is drop down the value just a little bit more. Now we can get closer to the center. And eventually I can bring in those greens again, maybe some purples. Yeah, I miss those purples. Those purples we brought into the tiger's head really added a lot of life and interest there. I may even take this pretty far down into the paws. Get it up a little bit more. I'm really looking at how the hairs of the tiger kind of flow. What we've learned in these past few weeks is, uh, and what I repeat all the time, is this form, the form idea. Everything you do, you have to describe the form in some way. Or you don't have to, but it helps to always think about the form. You know, how does the hair move and describe the form? And that's what I'm looking at. How does the value change to describe the form? And that presupposes that you know where the form is going. It's necessary. Even darker on this one. On the internals here. Even darker. I feel like I'm doing kind of a grisai workup. Grisai is uh, kind of like an old master technique. Well, not really old master. I mean, we have 
um, all kinds of artists that still use it. That got too dark in there. But basically what you do is you work up your entire painting in nothing but grays. You know, dark to light, gray. And then use a series of glazes over that to introduce color. You can look at... Oh, what's his name? I always forget his name. He's an artist on YouTube that I like a lot. Does the these kind of like old master techniques, but he also brings a lot of uh, contemporary ideas to it now, which is nice. Man, I can't remember his name. Oh, Caesar Santos. Haha, <laughs> it popped in my head. So check out Caesar Santos if you want to see how that. I, I totally Americanized his name. I'm sure it's Cesar Santos or something awesome in his language. I think Spanish, maybe? Not sure. Let's lighten that up just a little bit. Oof, too light. And now, <clears throat> now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom way in on the tiger. And what you can see, you see these nice little purples and things in here? I'm going to grab one of these purples. Actually, you know what I'll do? No, I'm not going to grab that purple. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to pick this gray, okay? This gray right here. I love doing this. This is so much fun. And um, the center of the wheel is here. I'm just going to keep it the same distance from the center. But I'm going to go out here to a purple. Maybe I'll intensify it a bit into a nice little... Actually, this is more of a magenta. And then, bam. Can you even see that? I mean, th there's this intense kind of a magenta there. And because we got the values exactly the same, all it adds is just life. And then I could I could jump to the other side into a green. As long as I keep it, you know, at the same saturation level, same value, different hue, life. Life into the color right there. Can do it everywhere. Let's go into this lighter color. So here, though this is nothing but gray, it's so close to gray barely go to the other side purple look at that magenta let's go into a red Ooh, I like this value it's kind of a nice gray let's go into a blue Ooh, see this one looks really weird, right? It's like, oh, that, that just stood out. It's because I put it over the wrong value. I would have to change the value to here and then go to a blue. Bam. Man, I love that. Isn't that awesome? I mean, th these are skills that we're learning here. These, these ideas that uh, are not difficult to bring into digital me or to traditional media. You know, just on your palette, you would look at the color that you have there, this kind of greenish color or grayish color, and you go, hmm, if I keep the same value and uh, saturation for another hue, I can change that. And it's just got a ton of life to it. Like way out here, this is a bit brighter. Uh, what would we go into on that? Let's, let's bring it into a green. Nice green there. And let's bring it back to a bit of an orange. Red. Intensify it just a bit more. I'm gonna blend some of that as well.
tons of texture down there, you can tell. And the stripes are over top of that layer. They look really weird. Um, why do they look weird? It's all about the edges. Edges are not lined up. They don't look, it's not part of the edges I created underneath, but no problem. We'll be able to line those up and make some changes to it and it'll look good later. I'm going to go back to this setup and call it a day. That was, how long did we spend on that? An hour and 21 minutes. I'm actually gonna, oops, yeah. Okay, tab it out, there we go. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me for the stream. Um, let's see, tomorrow is Monday. Yeah, 4.30 again tomorrow. The stream time, it may be changing in the future, I'm not sure. I have to get some schedules correct. Um, finding that I need to change up my sleep schedule a little bit, and then adding that within work, and eating and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, it may change. But anyway, I will see you tomorrow.